next second presenter is uh, uh, Kaushiki Dasu Gupta, University of Golbanga from India. I would like to introduce her career. Uh, she is assistant professor also. Yeah. Uh, she has done her PhD on the corruption uh, politics of India in South Asian history. A published book on uh, party politics in late colonial India. Currently working on her postdoctoral work on the issues of human employment in India. She has published uh, papers on different academic journals of international on South, uh, South Asian politics, polit uh, politics and uh, communal history and gender studies. Uh, she is now working as an assistant professor of history in the University of Golubanga, uh, India. Thank you, sir, and a very good morning to my audience. And thank you to IPSO and Istanbul Foundation of Science and Culture for giving me invitation and providing me such a wonderful platform to uh, share some of my thoughts with my audience. Uh, I have chosen here the topic, as you have seen, it is called Endangering the Female Body and the Crisis of Modernity, a study on some issues on Indian beauty industry. Now, as our uh, Honorable Chairperson just mentioned that it is not enough to talk about only on political crisis nowadays. We are now in the arena, we are now the threshold of the new millennium or we are now living in a world where cultural politics and as well as the politics of the mind, the politics of the body, that type of things are getting more importance in comparison to uh, different politics on international aura. And side by side, what my paper is talks about that how this concept of cultural politics or how these notions of cultural politics has threatened the identity of an Indian woman. Now, India, why I am talking about India in terms of not because that I am an Indian, uh, but, but because of the sense that India is a post-colonial country and like most other post-colonial countries, India has some problem which is very much common to other post-colonial countries of the world. And what is the problem of identity formation of an Indian woman? And this is a very burning issues, uh, particularly when we are talking about gender studies. And as far as the body politics is concerned, I think the conceptualization of the self, the transformation of the self, the transformation of the identity, identity of a woman in this multicultural world, these issues are very important as when we are talking about uh, politics, we are talking about culture. And I think it's very much relevant to the theme of this conference that how to live in peace and harmony in a multicultural world. Uh, so I will just, uh, it's a long paper, but I will try to make it brief uh, as far as possible. Now let me begin uh, with a uh, poem. It's by, uh, it's by Mirza Muhammad Raswa. Mirza Muhammad Raswa. Uh, he once uh, talked about the beauty of Umraujan Ada. Umraujan Ada, she was a courtesan and uh, in the Lucknow, court of Lucknow. And uh, Mirza Muhammad Hadi Raswa, he described the beauty of this lady, Umraujan. I'm translating that. She was fairer than the champa flower. Sweet innocence there was in every line. Her winsome ways did reason devour. Her sidelong glances charged with worth divine. 
Now, this line signifies what should be the ideal notion of beauty. Now, when beauty takes on its sensual tone, accentuating the sensual aspects of embodiment, enhancement of beauty and fulfillment of bodily sensations according to the senses largely depends on external resources to make it perfect and complete. Even if beauty lies within, its manifestation becomes necessary for the modern self because at both the physical and sociological level, the body appears to be crucial for the cultivation and experience of the gendered identity. Now, the question of gazing is very much important here. The question of gazing as well as the question of being looked at very often comes into a form of power culture where the rubric of controlling the self primarily lays within the structure of practical and material aspects of gendered embodiment because here the body remains neither a subject nor object rather as the vehicle of being in the world. Therefore, the body evolves as a site for introducing and shaping up worldly experiences in a context of different identities like caste, class, ethnicity and others. However, it is class which provides the primary impetus to situating the female body into the modern world structured according to the language of an embodied self in a multicultural milieu. Keeping in mind the feminist critique on the neutralistic explanations of sex and sexuality, it can safely be said that one may not born out, rather becomes a woman. I am quoting here from the, uh, from the famous second sex by Simone de Bovera, where she is talking about that one may not born, but rather becomes a woman, not simply by bodily experiences, but by a set of socio-political experiences making way into the world of bodily senses. Now, uh, this paper seeks to make an understanding of how the female body goes into extreme vulnerability when put into the context of cultural politics addressed by the language of gender, class and beauty. It is a question to be asked and resolved to take up the challenges put before modernity as a whole from a last few decades. In this paper, some selected issues of Indian beauty industry have been taken into consideration just to open up the debate for further exploration. In the way of discussion, the fashion magazines, fashion shows, beauty contests, cosmetic market, lifestyle products, and related issues has been emphasized to interrogate the notions of danger and crisis into the world of beauty, appropriating femininity as an embodied subject. Uh, in the understanding of the social and cultural changes in uh, India, the concepts like subjectivity and modernity and nativity have been used widely by the postmodern scholars while negating the meta narratives of larger historical and institutional forces. Now, but the colonial past and the related historical experiences does not provide India an easy access into the world of modernism because the term modern as progressive and native as backward could not be defined by the binary concepts of developed and underdeveloped in post-colonial situation. The entire debate on beauty and women embodiment fells into certain norms of structural consequences because in India, modernism seems to be a vague term used differently for different sections of the society. The religious rules according to the norms of beauty and fashion for women in ancient documents prioritized the caste, class and marital status of a woman. However, in post-colonial time, beauty and fashion standards of any Indian women often creates confusion on her class, age and ethnic identity. For instance, women taking interest on western style of actors and making regular visits to the beauty salons are considered to be less traditional and less Indian in comparison to those adhered to Indian style of actors and beauty statesmen. 
Indian women are forging a kind of psychological as well as sociological fight to look progressive and modern at the same time. Therefore, a modern Indian woman carries the twin responsibilities of fitting her bodily experiences well into the domain of national pride as well as to take the challenges of the world around her. The uh, doctrine of beauty or particularly the binary products of beauty markets in India indicates within the next few decades that India would become the largest cosmetic consuming country in the world. In spite of the global economic recession, the growing fashion consciousness and rising beauty concern for the Indian women, the cosmetic industry registered sells rupees 356.6 US billion in 2009 and the number is growing rapidly. India's integration with the global beauty market opened up channels of interrogation of how the female body is getting being endangered apart from the glittering persona entrusted upon her by the so-called beauty standards of the market. Beauty pageants in India are the best examples shown in this category. In India, Femina, the fashion magazine, conducts Miss India pageants every year and this contest gives young Indian women a direct chance to step forward into the glamour industry in the future. The whole training program prior to the event puts the maximum possible effort to create a future Miss India or Miss World by employing the best expert trainers from Indian film, fashion and beauty industry. By simply positioning the women body as not beautiful enough, the training program makes the contestants object of experiment and transformation. The fundamental attention was on a strict diet regime and a fairer skin. Both of these issues made the bodily experience an important part of the cultural discourse produced by colonialism into the domain of what it called the third world countries. In this domain of culture, the non-Western women, particularly those from the post-colonial countries, were placed on a homogeneous category as they, different from the white-skinned women of the West, referred as Uri in Western feminist discourse. The stereotypes of a slim body and fair skin have been used as the mark of a strategic power relation where the Western women appeared as the dictator and others simply as recipients or followers. This process should not be taken as a modified version of Westernism or colonialism, rather it must be viewed as a component of the same cultural politics where power comes into in a form of social mobilization or in a form of psychological perversion. The cultural tropes of a slim body and fair skin, if not universally, sprang from the similar hegemonic relation of power in India. Interestingly, the group of women who shared a natural ability to connect themselves with this process became the chief signatories of modernity in India. The beauty pageants, knowingly or unknowingly, became the prime markers of social change in India. The social prejudices on fair skin and slim body was taken to be a height by this contest while the market forces appeared as the hair, the main beneficiaries of the change. Numerous cosmetic products used for confirming the standards of international beauty somehow spoiled this passion and mission of Indian beauty, a state of purity immense from within and comes to get manifested fully either by proper cultivation or nourishment. Skin bleaching materials laser treatments, equipments has floated the market already and beauticians are not hesitant in prescribing them in the name of making the girls more confident and more modern. Now, uh, the advertisements have completely washed up the minds of the people and it is a concern for Indian society that uh, how to tackle with these problems. Now from Washington, one medical report has described that these bleaching creams not only contain carticides but mercury, a poison that can damage the nervous system also. In India, where skin lightening is related with social standards and higher social adaptability, the side effects are rarely been observed or even acknowledged. 
It is a fact that in comparison to the white skin people, the dark skin people are less vulnerable to the causes of skin cancer. Because of the level of melanin present in their skin, protects it from ultraviolet induced damages and act as a natural barrier to the penetration of ultraviolet rays into the skin. Unfortunately, there is no law in India which would make the consumers sure about the ingredients used in a fairness cream because the manufacturers are not bound to mention it on the pack and due to lack of chemical knowledge, the common consumers do not even understand the meaning of the chemical ingredients. It has been noted that there was a 25% uh, increase in the gross domestic sale of cosmetics and personal care products from 1996 to 2000. Now the female body as the feminine interprets, is being viewed more than a machine of reproduction, rather a mirror of self, which could be the right choice for all the women you are. Now, it is a fashion magazine which is trying to alter the notion of beauty and it is entering into the terrain of society and produce multiple identities for the Indian women. Let me uh, put some example here and that is, uh, apart from the stereotypes of a uh, fair skin, there is an obsession for body weight also. Now, this body weight seems to take the next important phase in reconstructing womanhood in contemporary India. An obsession with the body weight affected more or less all the young Indian women, including the aspirants of different beauty titles. The urgency of leaving perfect impression on the viewers not only indicates the points of social insecurity, but the women also creates an illusion of getting into higher social standards. Interestingly, the medical benefits of a slim body are rarely been recognized to get rid of obesity and other diseases. Now, this is not a problem in India, as far as the researchers are showing, also in Japan and Africa, there is the obsession, now it is being seen that there is obsession for the slim body, and uh, in Africa especially, where uh, body weight and eating ideals had never been an issue, but the black and mixed races are now in a socio-cultural flux between traditional cultural values and the values installed by the modern Western society. Now, uh, it is actually uh, comes within a terrain of post-colonial and post-modern times. That is the most influential thinking on the power of gazing. Uh, it comes from the writings of Michel Foucault, who has talked about the relationship of knowledge and power in the area of practices. Now, because of this type of practices, what we have seen, the power of controlling and the power of gazing is, has been completely adjusted on the nature of male gazing, but not on the nature of female gazing. Now, viewing the body as a uh, social object means the continuous process of making and remaking, and the body and the self are related to each other with so closely that both of them interact with the society in the same mode of communication. In this uh, world of a multicultural or globalized era, in this globalization, particularly after 1990s, when India entered into the uh, uh, phase of liberal economy, what you have seen, these Western standards of beauty are simply stepping into the more vulnerable version of a female body, which has already been perceived as a site for struggle in post-colonial India. The growing obsession for fair skin and slim body has brought some new areas of concern into focus. In a poor country like India, how the questions of eating disorder among the women affects the social standards, social condition and economic condition of the people or how the women from lower or upper middle classes are tackling the issues of beauty in opposition to their long-standing different notions of modernity within the same society, these are some very important questions. Now this paper actually opened up these questions and it has focused some important issues in this uh, context of cultural crisis and cultural politics and further researchers definitely would contribute to expand this matter that how far these notions of we and they, how far these dichotomies of Westernism and uh, these dichotomies between modernism, it can't be 
concluded it can be conceptualized within a broader multicultural milieu. I think uh, in near future different researchers would come and I personally I would be very much benefited from those researchers. Now thank you for giving me a patient hearing. Thank you so much.